get into the Word of God, and we've been going through the Psalms and noticing places where, particularly where Adonai is used, and, you know, and of course sometimes we we note Elohim, which many times is there, whether we've pointed it out or not. Um, and, um, and since this I don't know if this is going to be the last one for this year. I would think we'd still go when we get into December. But you never know the way some things happen. <clears throat> but anyway, with um, this, uh, I think, even though I've got way up there, in, I think up into the hundreds in the Psalms that I, I studied and have many things to share, we'll, we're going to want to jump back pretty soon on uh, Abraham in that situation, but there is one area, and it's not just a small one, in the prophets. So probably after the gathering, we're going to try to focus on that for a while. And it's a, it's, it's really different. It's, and it really explains some things out of the prophets, and out of almost all of the prophets, uh, and certainly out of the bigger ones. Um, so, uh, so, Lord willing, we'll get through with, uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to do uh, 37 tonight. So if you'll turn to Psalm 37. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to start with verse 10. <clears throat> For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. All right, so the psalm, this psalm's got more verses than this, but again, I don't... You know, I don't want to take a big long time on all of this, <clears throat> um, but we we see some general things. One is, you know, once you're through the corridor, or once you have passed through the the sufferings of Christ, and you've moved uh, out of that, then the Lord Adonai begins to deal with the evil doers and. Uh, yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. And then also, um, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. So there is an understanding of, but it's an understanding of what God will do. It is not an understanding of what we will do. And one of the things that I like about um, this this psalm is, um, well, we'll get into some of those things, but they are... They're not full of vengeance. They're not. Uh, it's like it's like Adonai is saying, "I'll I'll deal with this." Even if he didn't tell you their day will their day is coming. If he didn't tell you that, he will deal with that. And it may not be immediately, but that should be none of our business. Our business is the beauty of being in all those sufferings and yet being with with the Lord and His Spirit, and that Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Lamb, the Spirit of Christ, bringing also glory to the Father. And that's, you know, that's it. That's that's the sufferings of Christ. And that's, you know, um, uh, that's the one main goal. It's the purpose God brings us into those kind of things more than anything else. He wants to see His Son. He doesn't just want to deliver us. He wants to see this nature of Jesus in the face of, of well, the, the sufferings of Christ. When you consider what Jesus went through, and then yet, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. <clears throat> so, um, here in verse 12, it mentions one person of the Trinity, and it is, the just, okay, the just, and that's the Lamb of God, because that's the one that is being persecuted. So we see that the just is a person that didn't really do the wrong, 
and was really unfairly judged, unfairly treated, all the abuse, all of that stuff, which is not the issue again. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. I'm sorry. That's not the issue. Yes, that's usually our issue. Yes, that's all we think about when we get into it, what they're doing to us and what, how the, I'm being mistreated and what all is wrong in this situation and all that. Well, bang, a swing and a miss. And you missed the heart of God and the purpose of God for even allowing that. But we don't even know that God's allowing it or, or you know, think about God being in it. We just think about either the devil or the evil doers. All right, so... There is a focus of heart, not just a focus of, of soul. Our soul, and you know, you know, you know, we've been in that in First Peter, that our soul needs to be saved in the middle of it most of the time. <clears throat> All right, so um, notice that every time it mentions Adonai, that many times Psalms is usually quoted in the New Testament pointing to Jesus being crucified by others that many of the scriptures that do have the name Adonai in it, in the Psalms, those Psalms get quoted in the New Testament in relationship to Christ crucified. Kind of an amazing thing. Because the sufferings of Christ wasn't that, you know, um, uh, when Jesus was passing through Samaria and he, he went as though he would go to Jerusalem and and the people wouldn't receive him and the sons of thunder James and John wanted to rain down fire he's he's not get he's Jesus says you don't know what spirit you're of see he's he's focused on his death in a right spirit and that's where he's going regardless of other people's opinion of what he should be doing or shouldn't be doing or because what you've got is what the Samaritans are thinking, what he should be doing is he should be coming and ministering to us. What you have with the disciples doing is they shouldn't be treating him this way. So, Lord, shall we call down fire from heaven and, you know, destroy him for their, for their bad attitudes? Jesus is looking at him and going, you think their attitude was bad? Your, your, yours is worse. You're, you're choosing something way worse than what they were doing, but you think you're righteous because it's scriptural. Yeah, but it's not Christ. It's not seeing Christ in the scriptures. <clears throat> anyway, so um, uh, here in verse 12, it mentions that one person of the Trinity. It's the just. It's the lamb okay and also in verse 12 he's just he is described as him whom the wicked plot against the just meaning the one who is innocent or not guilty or is uh and and of course this applies to jesus but it's supposed to also apply to us when we get in that situation that's why that's why uh, Paul prayed that I may know him, that I may be, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to his death. Paul is crying out, I want to know him in a fellowship of sufferings. He didn't say, I want to know sufferings. He didn't say, I want to just go through stuff and, you know, and, and just by going through stuff, bad stuff, it's going to improve my character. No, he wants to know a fellowship that is there in the corridor, that is in nowhere else in that reality. So, um, they, they, the wicked plot, yeah, of course they do, against, we've been over that word several times, the just, okay, and that's Jesus. Um, it's, uh, it says of him that they gnash upon him with their teeth. All right, so where, where in, hmm, let me search my 
mind and my memory where have I heard that word the just used before oh oh first Peter first Peter let's go to first Peter keep your place here of course first Peter 3 chapter 3 and verse 18 <clears throat> and now Lord get our hearts and minds in such a place that when we read this we will see the Lamb and we'll see the fellowship of your sufferings. And we will understand that this is what you want to communicate to our hearts. Okay, First Peter 3, 18. For Christ also hath suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Oh, my God, can you not just pick that one apart and find every little nuance that's going on in there? I mean, you got, he's suffering for sins, but they're not his own sins. Okay, so um, the wicked plot against the just, if they plot against you, there's a good chance, and maybe some of you have even experienced this, the very attack. The very attack that they are saying, then the, the negative things that they're saying about you are not, you know they're not true in you, but you know that it's true in them. They're, they're saying you are them, and they're condemning it, but they would never condemn that in themselves. Okay? So, he suffered, but he suffered because of their sins, okay? Uh, the just for the unjust. And that's that's going to be the case. That's going to be the case. Uh, you know, the, the, the people who are well don't need a physician. He suffers the just for the unjust. Now, in our way of viewing that, um, it would be, well, I will lay down my life and suffer for, you know, for, for a good man, for a righteous man. This is Romans 5. But he didn't do it for the good people because they deserve it. They deserve it because they've been good. He did it for the evildoers. The, not just the evildoers in general, but for sure the evildoers that were doing evil against him. And piling it on, piling it on. We saw that in the last class in, in Psalm 22. Whoa! Whoa! All right, so, um, also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, why did he do it? And I told you in uh, First Peter class and probably other ones concerning First Peter that there that there were several places in there that shows something amazing that you can actually not just go through this for the sake of Christ to be glorified in you, or for the sake of the Father to be glorified by the Christ that is in you, but to bring the evildoers to God. Yes. And it's in it's in First Peter several different places. That there can be this purpose that I'm going through this for you. But you're not saying that. You're opening not your mouth. You're not declaring yourself. You're not declaring your righteousness. You're taking the stripes. Because if you declared your own righteousness and you declared what you are, how you're doing this for them, and you, whether you declare it to them or somebody else, you're, you are just destroying, obliterating the whole spirit. You shouldn't even be going through it then because then you just suffer needlessly. Because there is no glory to, to the Lamb or to the Father, and they're not, they're not going to get anything out of it because you have... The, the simple simple term that I use uh, is you didn't suffer in a right spirit. Now that could be translated a million different ways, but that's why I qualified as we go. 
a right spirit. And that is, you don't have to declare yourself. You don't have to show how righteous this is and, you know, declare it and have some, you know, like uh, Haman have to have people that agree with him on, on what he's doing and encouraging him. You, 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 all you need is to have that spirit for the Lamb in you and for the Father and you can even have it with mixed in or mingled in with that rather for them lord forgive them they know not what they do okay not lord condemn them they don't even know what they're doing wrong spirit wrong understanding okay so <clears throat> um that he might bring us to god being put to death Yep, being put to death, yeah, in the flesh, yep, but quickened or made alive by the Spirit. And that's not just talking about the resurrection of Christ, that's talking about this whole situation of what you went through in the corridor will quicken life. It will. It can touch those people. It, they have free will, so that's ultimately partly up to them. Um, but it... it brings forth life. You, you, where do you get that at? You, well, a lot of places, but you get that out of um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10, uh, bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus. I bear that about in my body, uh, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in the flesh. So then death works in me, being put to death in the flesh, but life in you, there's the quickening. You go, well, I want the quickening. To, I want the quickening. <laughs> You'll get the quickening if it's him. And and uh, there's a lot of scriptures in First Peter 2 that talk about that, that spirit of glory and all of that stuff. You say, well, I've never experienced and I've been through that corridor many times in a right spirit. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe you... Maybe you had some things lingering in there that weren't him. Because, they, because the scriptures declare that there is that quickening or there is that spirit of glory. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, but quickened by the spirit. Okay, so, um, excuse me just a minute. But while they are doing that to the just, then we have verse 13. The Lord, that word is Adonai. The Lord, Adonai, shall laugh at him. Okay, the last part of it was um, what they were doing to him. Um, the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Next verse, verse 13. The Lord, or Adonai, shall laugh at him. Okay? <clears throat> For he seeth his day coming. <clears throat> so, whatever, whatever he's going through, whatever you are, would go through here, um, as the just... If in the past we went through all these things, but we didn't realize that there was an Adonai, then we may have felt like we're going through this alone. Yeah. And we might have said that or thought that or, you know, or if we didn't think alone, we might have thought, nobody really understands me <laughs> or nobody cares, you know. And where is the where is the people of God? <clears throat> well, God's keeping them away because He's wanting more than your comfort. All right. So, um, but if you understand that you have an Adonai, then you're never alone. But I, I wrote something down here. Let me just see this. Let me read this again. But while they 
they are doing that to the just, <clears throat> verse 13, there's another of the Godhead watching, though unnamed as to whether it's the Father or the Spirit, yet it refers to the Lamb's Adonai. And that's that's the use of that in verse 13, the, the second word there, Adonai. Uh, <clears throat> the just is not just going through this alone, but has another person of the Godhead as his Adonai. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to give you another sentence here. And uh, there's a certain amount of comfort of, we could say, even before we understood Adonai, we could say, well, God's with me. And so there's a certain amount of comfort or whatever. Maybe comfort's not even the goal here, but there's a certain amount of comfort knowing that we're not alone. Okay. But there's more to this aloneness than that. It's got to be something greater. So I wrote, but that's not the main purpose. He is not alone. He is going through this with purpose for someone else. Okay, I'm doing this for the son in me. I want him to be able to conquer me, if you will. I want his spirit to be able to conquer my soul, if you will. I want the, f I'm doing this for the father. I want the father to get his son. Uh, okay, and then I, I'm doing this for someone else, the son, the father, and I'm doing this for others. I'm not alone in this. They may not realize it. Those evildoers over there may not realize it. They may look at me and laugh and all this um, and think that I'm alone, but I'm not alone. I have them. I'm with them. I am with you. I am going through this for you. I will not accuse you or even though if it's all true, it is not my place. It's my Adonai's place. I will not do that. I will bless you when you slap me and I will turn the other cheek and I will all those things that Jesus said. They're not just random little little teaching sprinklings of goodness throughout the scripture. They are declarations of the nature of God and the way that he wants us to react in these things, knowing we've got a relationship with one of them as our Adonai, with another one as our life, and there's another one in there too. So, Adonai laughs at the wicked because, okay, so it says... Uh, the Lord, or Adonai, shall laugh at him, for he seeth his day coming. So, Adonai shall laugh because he sees their day coming. Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, the uh, our place in that, if we're in the, the corridor, if we're within the realm of the dealings of the sufferings of Christ, it is never our place to act as if we're the Adonai. It's never our place. We are supposed to be low. We are supposed to be. And you see, I mean, it, it go back to Genesis 18, where Abraham finally figures out the, the person of Adonai and quit using the name of it in chapter 15 and 17. And uh, you look, he's lowly. He's got one thing on his mind. And that is to bless Elohim, to bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and to pour out. And, and so leave that spirit and start thinking you're the Adonai, or start thinking like an Adonai when you're supposed to be the, the just for the unjust. Again, you've, you've soured the milk. You've... you've destroyed the the plan and the, the thing that God had in mind for bringing it. And it's, you know, another round in the wilderness. You know, how many will it take? Well, I don't know. It didn't take a whole year to go around. So who knows how many times they went around that wilderness. Forty years of doing it. All right. So, um, Adonai laughs at the wicked because everything he does, the wicked does, against the just brings about his own demise. Can you think of an example of that in the scripture? Well, okay, yeah, you're right. Jesus on the cross. 
Okay, another one. Oh, yeah, you're right. You know, um, Haman making this gallows to hang um, Mordecai on, and guess who ends up dying on it? Okay. Mordecai didn't have to get angry and go build a gallows and say, hang him on it, hang him on it. He's not worthy to live. He's evil. He does horrible things. He destroys lives. Well, you can, you can yell and scream and rant and rave with what's wrong with the evildoer, you know. First of all, you should eventually you may get to a place where you'll expect those things out of evildoers and not be surprised. You go, well, I expect that, and the Lord expects Christ out of me. So, um, so he he laughs, but he doesn't bring out uh, bring him to his own destruction. There's too many scriptures that show that you know. You bring yourself to your own destruction. You know, you lay a snare for somebody else and you fall into it. Bunch of, bunch of, bunch of stuff like that. You know, he's not laughing because I'm going to get you. He's laughing because I, I, what you're doing right now, Mr. Evildoer or Miss, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Evildoer or whoever, what you're doing right now is the seeds of what your future is going to be. If you sow apple seeds, you're going to get apples. If you sow orange seeds, you're going to get orange. You are right now determining your future because you reap what you sow. Because you reap what you sow. The simple, simple version of it. All right? So God doesn't have to be vindictive. He just knows that everything you're doing over there as an evildoer is you're, you're bringing about your own demise. You know? And what's funny about it is you think you're destroying everybody else. That's the funny part. You think you're destroying everybody else, and really you're destroying yourself. All right. So, um, so Adonai laughs. This is a common thread of Adonai. He laughs at those who by force, he laughs at those who by force think they have the victory over one of his servants. Because they are as a servant in that corridor. And should be in and out, doesn't matter at all times. Um, so um, there's um, three places and this is one of them. Uh, three places in the Psalms that mention that God laughs at the evildoers. We've actually already covered the first main one. Anybody remember where that was at? Oh, yeah, yeah, Psalm 2. I'm acting like somebody's over there raising their hand and saying Psalm 2. Psalm 2. And, uh, wow. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Deb and I were talking, and she said, man, I love this Psalm 16. And I said, well, I do too. And it's got so much stuff. I said, my favorite so far has been Psalm 2. And she's going, my favorite 16. And I'm going, wow. But Psalm 2, you know, for me, Psalm 2 showed all three of them. It showed every acts, acts, you know, uh, action and, and the story. It's like a big story in just a few little verses. And it just blew my mind. Anyway, that was, the, that was uh, Psalm 2, verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord Adonai shall have them in derision. Because this is, they, don't, they think, because their way of thinking is wrong. You want to promote yourself, you're wrong. You want to uh, step on other people to get ahead, you're wrong. And it's going to bring, it's, you're, you're going to be in derision by all of these things. Uh, and then Psalm 37 again here, the Lord Adonai shall laugh at him for he seeth his day coming. And then finally, uh, Psalm 59 verse 8 through 11 says this, <clears throat> But thou, O Elohim, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have, have all the heathen in derision. Thou shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. You know, it's a, 
it's an interesting thing. Um, this this word heathen and uh, barbarian, you don't you hear it more as heathen. Um, it was used a lot um, in relationship, particularly uh, when the Greeks came on the scene and they ruled the world and they did all this stuff. Um, uh, their language spread, and that's what they were, you know, Koine Greek is what they were speaking in when G in Jesus' day. And uh, the word heathen and barbarian, they would use that, and we would look at it and we'd go, you know, well, that's because they're just so backward, or they don't use, you know, silverware or something. You know, they're just heathen. They're just barbarians. Uh, but they used that term for someone who didn't know how to understand or speak the Greek language. Now, let me tell you something. That's big stuff right there. Because with God, what if that's really his view too? And that with him, we're just like barbarians. We're just like heathen in the sense that we just don't understand his language. And we're doing all these Christian things, but it has no life and it has no uh, um, uh, spirit and, and other things. Anyway, didn't mean to get off on that. <clears throat> um, let's see. So, uh, but thou, O... Uh, Elohim shalt laugh at them, thou shalt have the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee. Because of his strength, Adonai, remember? Uh, because of his strength I will wait upon thee, O God. Uh, for God is my defense. For, I will wait for God is my defense. I will not defend myself. God is my defense. Okay. When you're in the corridor and you're being attacked by evildoers and they're all around, everything in you makes you want to come to your own defense and prove. But, you know, no, God is my defense. Uh, because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. Defense, The God of my mercy shall prevent me. He's going to prevent me. from my own defense. For um, God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Wait a minute before you get too much on that. Slay them not. This is the very next words, verse 11. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power and bring them down, O Adonai, our shield. Okay, so let me read that verse, uh, verse 11, that last part, in the New Living Translation. Don't kill them, for my people will soon forget such lessons. Scatter them with your power and bring them to their knees, O Adonai, our shield. Don't kill them. That's not my desire. My desire is to bring them down so that they can, like the evildoers over there, the just for the unjust, that they might come to God. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I wrote down, there is no place for revenge or prayers of bitterness. Lord, may you through this process humble them to bring them closer to you. And then uh, notice that last part there. Bring them down, O Lord, O, o Adonai, O Adonai, our shield. O Adonai, our shield. O Adonai, our shield. This verse, in, we're, we're reading Psalm 59, because, or 50, 59, because it had that thing about the Lord shall laugh. This psalm, this psalm in 59.8 seems to vindicate the thought that Abraham was first introduced to God 
as Adonai when, when in Genesis 15 God described himself as Abraham, Abram's shield. Here it is, Genesis 15, starting verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. Remember, this was this is his first inter it, it, Some of you might remember when we were there, you know, it was like, where did he come up with the meaning, especially to know the spirit of it, it by chapter 15, but even the name, because that was the first time it was used in the whole Bible, Genesis 15, verse 1. And so it was like, how did he do that? And Deb, I think I mentioned this, but Deb said to me, I think that shield thing there. Um, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Not the death of your enemies. Not the conquering of the evildoers. I am thy shield and then I am your exceedingly great reward. And Abram said, my, uh, said, Lord, or Adonai, Lord God, Adonai God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Remember, this is his first introduction to the name, and it represented a shield and a protector. But Abram totally missed the spirit of it and thought, well, then I can boss you around, and you're my shield, and you're my protector, and you're going to do what I tell you, not, which is the exact opposite. And then you see that when he finally gets it in a couple of verses later, he's very lowly, and he's very broken and he thinks of one thing one thing him those three Elohim and this thing started with that Elohim the three and he ministered all the different ways that he ministered to them so um, Uh, so that's it. That's it. I hope that's a blessing to you. Uh, as I said, next uh, next time we get together after the gathering, Thanksgiving, uh, whenever we restart, I want to go and show. Uh, remember, as we're knowing Adonai, we're knowing God. We're finding out an aspect of God that we didn't know, Abraham didn't know, and that, you know, um, uh, we're growing in an understanding of him, and the result of that is that we will better relate to him on the basis of him than relating to him on the basis of us because of all the lacking of knowing who and how he really operates and is. And so this is, Lord willing, and that's his purpose, opening his heart to let us know him um, so that we can fellowship with him in his sufferings but but it's fellowship it's not it's not just sufferings it's fellowship and a lot of people go through sufferings and they're you know well, I'm with God and Lord I'm with you and you know but they're not there there's no fellowship there because there's no understanding of him so anyway that's what we're trying to do here and that said and this is the last statement and that is that this other aspect that's in in the um, prophets it's pretty eye-opening and it will be helpful for us to understand this about God so that we can relate properly and 
and it may answer a lot of questions also in the process of why certain things are said in the prophets that seem sort of random. I mean, that, that do seem random when indeed they're not only not random, they deeply apply to these things. Okay, uh, let's pray. Father, we just uh, we want to approach you in lowliness we, uh, because we're not the Adonai. We're not in charge. We think we're in charge. We think we got it together. We think that we understand enough to be really good at relating to you. And, and yet, if it's possible, if it could actually be possible that maybe we don't and maybe we're really off in a lot of things, then we would like to say to you, help us to know you, help us to relate to you instead of always trying to get you to learn our language, learn the language of barbarians and heathen, that we learn your language and we become of your kingdom in spirit and in understanding the king that is over this kingdom in, in his spirit and way. Father, may your Holy Spirit breathe on the word in such a way that our hearts will just melt and we will just repent. We will just see how high-minded and arrogant that we really as a people are. And we will want to be more in the image that Elohim had in his heart from the beginning. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.